Once again, Europe proves that their governments are oh so very based when it comes to open source software. The other day, I read about how Switzerland is going to start to require all of the software that is used within their federal government to be open source. And this post reminded me about the German state of Schleswig Holstein, which I'm sure I totally pronounced wrong, but hopefully we'll get a correction in the comments section from every single German on the internet, since of course, Germany was mentioned. But anyway, this state also began a similar project where earlier this year, they started migrating 30,000 PCs that are being used in different areas of the government from Microsoft Office and Microsoft Windows to LibreOffice and GNU Linux. They're also going to be using Nextcloud to replace their dependence on Microsoft SharePoint and Open Exchange in tandem with Thunderbird to get away from using Microsoft Exchange and Outlook. There's also plans in place to use or develop an open source replacement for Active Directory and an open source telephony solution. I really hope they do end up developing some new software. I mean, imagine your tax dollars going towards developing something that you could actually use yourself instead of your tax money just indirectly increasing Microsoft's market cap to the point that Microsoft is worth almost three-fourths of your entire country's GDP. Now, in the post that was made about this migration to the German minister's homepage, the decision is being described as in favor of independence, sustainability, and security. And it's also being described as the first step towards complete digital sovereignty of the country. And further steps are going to follow. Digital sovereignty is really something that more people in more governments should be aiming for, especially in lieu of the CrowdStrike bug that caused 8.5 million computers and counting around the world to crash. That incident simply came from so many corporations trusting a third party to do their information security for them by installing a security appliance that hooked into the kernel of the Windows operating system. And when that security appliance failed, the whole kernel went with it. But the Windows operating system itself can also be seen as a third party tool that so many governments and people are relying on. Only Microsoft really knows the inner workings of Windows at a source code level, and even then, I'm not fully convinced that they know what's going on either. Just read some of the support posts on Microsoft's website to get an idea of what they know. But even if Microsoft was a more competent company and Windows was a less awful OS, it still doesn't make much sense for any government much less the Swiss or German government to put their trust in it. I mean, maybe the use of Windows here in the United States isn't perceived as badly by people since Microsoft is a US company and I guess our government could retaliate against Microsoft much more easily if they did do something malicious. But even if Uncle Sam hung Microsoft executives high for treason in this hypothetical scenario, it still wouldn't undo all of the damage that was done. And of course, even with open source software, there needs to be auditing done to the software that's used in order to avoid another XZ fiasco from happening. And if the government is participating in this security auditing, which by the way, would be the best way for them to actually increase the digital security of their people instead of just trying to pass laws that ban encryption under the guise that it's for their own protection, uh, that would be a huge benefit to the governments, the corporations, and to the people who are using this software the world over. I'm really glad that more countries are at least starting to go down the open source route. It's also a really excellent contingency plan if you think about it, in case a big tech company just decides to not comply with the new European tech laws. Because 
Imagine being in a situation where you work for a European government and you're trying to tell Microsoft to pay a fine, and then your very next request is for them to give you some tech support with your Exchange server that's having problems. You know, I really hope more countries follow suit with this, and since there is a huge shift in software that's taking place in Germany and Switzerland, along with plans to potentially develop some new open source software, I'm sure that these changes are also going to bring in new local tech jobs in Germany, Switzerland, and elsewhere that goes open source. And I'd also imagine a lot more money could be saved by the country by not buying licenses from Microsoft for Windows and all their other products, or having to rely on local Microsoft establishments in Germany for support, which I'm sure the result of those local establishments is money trickling its way up to Microsoft in America for the most part. But one thing these European governments need to be very careful about is who exactly they are hiring. So I read this other bit of tech news today about how a company called Know Before discovered that one of their newly hired remote workers was actually a North Korean hacker. Apparently, the remote employee tried to load malware onto his company-issued Mac with a Raspberry Pi, and no before was able to detect this attempted breach via the Mac's onboard security software. The company's security team then contacted the employee to figure out what was going on, how on earth did you manage to get your company-issued Mac hacked on day one, and the employee just tried to play it off by saying that he was troubleshooting speed issues on his router and that that might have been the source of these security alerts they got. But the security team wasn't buying the BS. They tried to get the employee on a call so that he could better explain what's going on. The employee said he was unavailable. And about 20 minutes later, the employee just stopped responding altogether, which prompted the security team to quarantine his laptop. Now, when I first heard about this, I was really intrigued and curious about the logistics. So it turns out North Korea has thousands of people that they train to infiltrate companies and governments in this way by becoming a remote employee. And the whole time they're working there, they're sending their paychecks, or at least most of their paychecks, to the North Korean government. So I guess these companies are unknowingly funding the North Korean government. and. The hackers are also physically in North Korea most of the time. What they do is they VPN into what No Before is calling an IT Mule laptop farm. And these farms are located in the US or other friendly regions. This is where the laptop originally gets sent to. And it's probably also where these hackers are claiming is their place of residence. And while the legit employees are working in the mornings here in America, these North Korean hackers are working a night shift in North Korea to make it appear like they really are at the laptop farm in that time zone doing legit work. But here's the real kicker. The hacker, in this case, used a stolen US-based identity in order to get the job and the hacker used an AI face swap tool to put their face on the body of this stock image of a white guy wearing a suit. Now, obviously, hindsight is 2020. You know, it's easy for me to sit here and say that this guy's neck doesn't quite match his face, and that's a bit of a red flag right there, or to point out that even if you run the fake picture in Yandex's reverse image search, you get results for the original stock image because they're both very, very similar. And when you look at the stock image and the face swap one that the hacker put on their application side by side, it immediately becomes apparent that there's some shenanigans taking place. But the HR team at No Before conducted four separate video conference interviews with this hacker in order to confirm their identity, and they still hired him. 
<laughs> it's very tricky to catch this kind of infiltration with remote employees, and it's really only going to get harder as AI tech gets better. In fact, I would bet that if the North Koreans would have used an AI generated photo for the face swap from a site like thispersondoesnotexist.com instead of a very common, very generic stock photo, then they would have even defeated my reverse image search check. Europe is slowly walking down the long road of free and open source software towards true digital sovereignty. And I hope they avoid the many detours that point back to the cyberpunk dystopia along the way. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm, and check out my online store, base.win, where you can get awesome merch like the Come and Find It or Little Damon t-shirts, and save 10% store-wide when you pay in Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.